Jordan Hicks. How's Jordan Hicks. Good. Uh, I was just telling somebody else we've we've been very cautious with him mm -hmm. in uh, springtime because we want to make sure that he gets to training camp and there's no issues. He's he he's chomping at the bit right now, but uh, anyhow, he's done a nice job. He's he's uh, done a great job in his rehab, so no issues with him. What does it mean you've having Hicks? Fortune. You've had the good fortune to coach a lot of good linebacking groups in your career. Mm -hmm. When you look at where the status is of this linebacking group, you don't have Kendricks now. You're being cautious with Jordan Hicks. How do you feel about the depth and overall quality and quantity of your linebacking core? Well, I, I like our group. Now, I say that because we've only gone through OTAs and it's not padded practices. So I think that's that'll be the litmus test for us is when we finally get the pads on. But I like our group. I, we've got a nice mix of veteran guys and some young players, uh, as well as some free agents that we've brought in that I feel good about. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'd am say I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> so. Ken, what does it mean having Nigel Brown back, especially with the role that he took on at the end of last season after Jordan got injured? Well, for me personally, I thought Nigel was the best offseason signing that we had. Uh, that's me being selfish. I told Howie Roseman, I said, Howie, you, I said, I owe you a lot getting Nigel back because he, he meant so much for us. I mean, to come in and plug in at, at the linebacker, at the Mike linebacker position um, midway through the year when Jordan went down. And, just became important for us. We needed a veteran guy in there to call the defense and and somebody that wouldn't get rattled or, or get stars in his eyes if the games got bigger and bigger. And he did that for us. He's just such a calming influence and he's got such a great, I think he's a guy that does, thinks ahead of the problem better than most guys that I've had before. Um, he can see things that are happening out on the field. He knows how to get it solved. Uh, before it becomes a problem on the next play. And that's, as a coach, that's something that you really appreciate about him. I mean, he's just, and he brings a swagger to our group. You know, he's a tough, durable guy for us. And I just love the guy. I'm so happy that we got him back. What's been your uh, favorite moment or most special moment since winning the Super Bowl, other than the parade? Has there been a moment for you, whether uh, that comes to mind? Oh, I don't know. It's just it's been you know happy for the players. I, I can't think of any one particular instance. Uh, you know, just enjoy it. Uh, and again, now the thing that's going to be key for us is to refocus and and forget about what happened last year and start worrying about what we can do next year. Because again, I think we'll get everybody's best game. I think when you're you're coming back as the Super Bowl champ, I think you're going to get every team's best game. So we're going to have to have our A game every week, or else you know it will just it'll it'll take its toll on us. So the new helmet, the new helmet, the helmet, and targeting rules in the NFL are they changing your plans? How you're doing things right now? Well, it's it's certainly going to change the dynamics of the game. I, hopefully, it's not going to change how I teach tackling. I've mm -hmm. I've kind of uh, gone away from you know the the. University of Washington and the Seattle Seahawks, you know, they made a big thing about getting the head out of tackling. That's something that I've embraced the last couple of years. So hopefully uh, there isn't going to be a big retool right. at my position about how we teach tackling. But certainly it's going to be interesting to see how it's, um, how it's judged in the preseason, you know, how, how, the, how they throw the flag on those things. Uh, we've sent in a lot of clips, you know, they've given us an instructional video from the, from the league. We'll see, uh, because we, <laughs> we had the officials in one weekend and, you know, I think uh, John Ferrari, our football guy, sent them, put up about 12 clips and the first clip comes up and, okay, so we show it to them and how would you call that? Well, one guy says, oh, that's a flag. The other guy goes, I wouldn't have called that. You know, so they're not even sure yet. You know, they there's still some more, um, there's still some more work on their part as far as deciding exactly how this thing is going to be going to be judged and how it's going to be called. It'll be interesting to see. That's what I was going to ask if you felt there was clarity, but I guess you don't feel there's a lot of clarity. Not yet. Know. Now I'm sure as time goes on, these guys are going to have more and more, and right. people are giving them more instances and more looks at what. Mm -hmm. What are going to be called and what's not going to be called? But man, when we had them in the spring, it wasn't they—they they weren't exactly uh, 
crystal clear on how they were going to call in. So there is a mechanism where you can send things you have questions on and you will get answers or you have gotten answers? No, we, we, we will get answers. Okay. And, you know, we've like we've done, we've taken out a bunch of clips on stuff on our own players. Now, yeah. the, the league uh, film will show te different teams yeah. doing different things and they'll say, hey, this is going to be called and this would not be called and this is going to be a, an ejection, right. you know, the, in the new targeting rule. But then we send in stuff from our own team and say, hey, Lee, take a look at this play. Um, I sent one in for, for John just the other day uh, that he sent into the league, and it was um, one of our linebackers on a tackle. Would this have been called uh, with the new rule? And then you just, through that, I think you just keep getting clarity about what you feel is going to be called, and then you, and then you try to coach around it. Ken, what are you seeing in the competition at the weak side spot? with Michael obviously not coming back? Well, we've got a good mix. We've got young guys. We've got Nate Gary. We've got Kamu. We've got Corey Nelson. Um, Paul Warlow would have uh, gone into that mix a little bit had he, had he not had his injury. But we've got good competition there right now. And something will shake out when we put the pads on and we go through training camp. But it's going to be a process. There's no uh, clean, clear winner right now. Uh, I think there's good competition there, and that'll, that'll help us make, be make us better. So.